Hi everyone, it's Colin McEwen from the New Fly Fisher. Thanks for joining us. In this video, what I'm going to be talking about is my boat bag, my boat box, what I put in them. Now, I'm going to actually make this two videos because the Orvis bag, which is fantastic, I really like these, they're waterproof, they're lightweight, carry a lot of stuff. This is what I like to travel with. Where in the Yeti box, the Go box, I really like these uh, to take around here locally. I throw them in my boat, I throw them in friends' boats, and I also take them in pontoon boats. Carry a lot of stuff, really heavy duty. Let's have a look at what I take out in my box that you can have you know, an idea of what you could put in your box if you were to get one. So I really like this Yeti Loadout Go Box 30. Um, this is something that came out a couple of years ago and I started seeing them in uh, drift boats uh, out in the Western USA uh, used by guides. And I remember asking one of them, I said, why did you get this as opposed to uh, one of the lighter waterproof bags? And his statement was, they're so heavy duty, they're like your coolers, uh, they take a lot of abuse, they're great for getting organized, and uh, they're indestructible. The only thing that's bad about them for me is if I'm traveling and getting on planes and that, these things are fairly heavy. So, uh, I mean, if you want to pay for the baggage overage, they're great. But what I found for myself personally, for where I fish here in this area, and I'm talking about places I can drive to, this box is absolutely fantastic. Because yes, it's waterproof. Yes, it carries a lot of stuff. And wow, you can get so organized. Okay, so let's have a look inside of this loadout box from Yeti. And this box, what I've done is I've built this for when I go uh, fly fishing here in my region and where I can drive to for bass. I love catching smallmouth bass and uh, whether it's walking wade, whether it's um, going in a friend's boat out on a lake, or even we'll sometimes go down the local rivers in uh, kayaks and in uh, pontoon boats. And this Yeti box is perfect for all those situations. Even when I walk and wade, what I'll do is I'll use this uh, in my truck, having all my gear in it, and I'll just grab what I need, stick it on top of my waders, or I'll put it in my sling bag, but the key is it's got everything I need real handy. So uh, first thing I can tell you about these uh, Yeti boxes is not only the heavy duty and somebody's really thought them out well because there's places where you put a sling on them, you can put a lock through them here. They're of course waterproof, got a great seal on the edges. They've also got this compartment on the top that's fantastic. They got this tray, dividers, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Let's have a look at what I've actually got in this box, which uh, you might find very interesting. The first thing I want to point out is, <laughs> as you all know, I like to organize things and I like to label things. So all my fly boxes I'm carrying my flies in, um, I like to use a color coordination uh, system so I know that, okay, this says it's orange. I know it's my bass fly. So when I'm loading this box up, and I tend to do it that I set them up for the summer and I'm good to go. But this is my bass uh, box, and this one is bass crayfish. So inside this, this is one of those great meal boxes that you've seen me talk about in other videos with the slip foam. I open it up, and there are all my crayfish patterns ready to rock and roll. Same time, I can, again, put this back in here. I could grab woolly buggers, I got mice patterns, um, bass poppers, all types of different extremers. They're all set in these boxes. And I even have in another type of box. And in case you're wondering, the descriptions in the description area uh, below this video in the description box in YouTube, uh, I'll have the links to the different boxes and some of the things I've got in my box. So you, if you want to check them out, you can find them. This is a new fly box I got from Meal, and it's fantastic. And uh, Got a label here. It's my uh, dry flies and nymphs. Now, it's a white label as opposed to the orange. And the reason why it's white, this is actually a trout box, but I go fishing in some places where the bass are gonna be taking uh, dry flies. So 
what's great about this box, there it is, all set. All my dries, flip it over, and in here, foam, got my nymphs, and I even have another box here, which is really fantastic. This So this, this one is a great box. This is a smaller version of the large ones. So this is a 3020 NS. This is a smaller version. Uh, and this one is my hex nymphs and dries because I'll tell you, when the hexes are on, oh, it's insane for the bass. They just go crazy. I've had 3X tippet on and been broken off by a big three and a half to four pound smallmouth. They hit so hard. Um, so you got to gear up when, when the hex hatch is on. It's so magical. So in here, I've got some great dries that I use, topwater flies. I also have a selection of hex nymphs that I like to use that work really well. And this one fly, I got to show you this one. A friend of mine's daughter, uh, his name is David. His daughter, Heather, invented this. It's called Heather's Hopper. And it's got foam, deer hair. This pattern just kills during a hex hatch, especially the yellow ones here, but the tan ones will work too. You throw those out and just give them a little pop, bass just munch them. Ooh, so, so good. Anyways, these boxes are great. I have everything organized and I got this idea from a guide out in Wyoming who had this all organized like this. So I've got everything set. I just reach in here, grab the fly I need, tie it on, take the old one, put it back in. Fantastic. Okay, the next part. Let me show you this tray. And this tray is so handy. Again, the guides out west were showing me how they had them all organized. So I've got a, a, a unique number of things in this, this box, which I think everyone can relate to. First, I really love using a lanyard. Uh, and when I'm talking about it, using a lanyard is when I'm out in a pontoon boat or I'm in just even my boat, I like to have everything handy. So I put it on this. There's my nippers, my floatant, and of course, always important, having a hook hone so I can keep those hooks sharp. And even something for uh, straightening my leaders and my tippet when it gets a little uh, curly. But everything's on this. I hang it around my neck, real handy. Tippet, all set to go. I've got all the size I need for bass fishing. There's some leaders already put together if I want to use those instead of building my own. Um, I've got some extra forceps. And these just aren't forceps. Uh, this one is, but this one is special because it can cut wire. And why do I want to be able to cut wire? Because sometimes when I'm fishing on some of the rivers around here, fishing for bass, there's pike. And some of them I drive to, there's musky. So if we see a musky move, we're going to be putting some uh, bite wire on and uh, hopefully having some su success catching one of those big pike or musky. Of course, I've got weights in here, extra floating, hook hone, an extra one. And these, these, I love these. I use these all the time, uh, especially when you're having a, a long day of stripping flies. And that are the, the uh, finger uh, gloves. You put it on your stripping finger so you don't get those big grooves, uh, sometimes caused by a fish ripping line out or just through the course of a day pulling a line. These uh, little finger gloves are perfect. They're a great protector. Got extra nippers, floatant, lighter. Of course, always want to have a uh, multi-purpose knife with everything in there, scissors, cutters, etc. This might surprise a few people that I've got this, but this again, when we go on the lake, this is a, a deeper chirp. Uh, this is a portable sonar. Absolutely fantastic. I've got some old uh, fishing line attached to it. There's the charger also. And what I do, it's a bit of a mess right now, but I just clip this onto my pontoon boat, I clip it on the side of my boat, and it links to my phone, and I get a picture of what's going on. So I don't have to bring uh, a sonar into the pontoon, or even if I'm out in a friend's boat or in a kayak, just clip this on, have a look at my phone. I can clamp the phone. Uh, to the boat if I've got the, the, the tool for it. But this will give me a picture of what the structure is, where the bass are, more importantly, I'm usually looking for structure and bait fish. This is great to have in the boat and in my box. And of course, always good, I've got a bunch of these cleaning cloths for your sunglasses, 
or somebody else in the boat gets some water or rain in their face, uh, I always have lots of that. Next thing, extra bass line. Because I don't know about you, some, sometimes things go wrong in the boat. And uh, in fact, I've been in the boat when somebody's put their fly line accidentally under the boat and it gets pulled into the prop and that's the end of the line. I have a floating fly line, an extra one always inside the boat. I carry some extra sunglasses, of course, because either myself, uh, I might, they might fall off my head if, they, if I don't have my lanyard on. I sit on them, I've done that. Uh, or your buddy doesn't have them, or your friend that's with you, or whoever it is. Uh, extra sunglasses are handy to have. I like to bring some uh, power bars, uh, protein bars. These are great when you're really hungry. You know, of course, you know, I usually have my cooler bag in the boat too, but sometimes people don't have food or it's just, we went out for the afternoon, evening, and we didn't bring any food. There's something to uh, give you a little kickstart. Okay, if you're going out in the woods, you know why I have this. I always have TP. You never know when things are gonna happen or if there's a woman in the boat with you or you've got your daughters with you. You want to have some TP for a little shore visit. I always like to have insect uh, repellent. Uh, these are wipes. I also sometimes have spray. I like the bends. It seems to work really well. In fact, uh, it's probably my favorite to take to Labrador. Of course, sunscreen, because when you're the ultimate white guy like I am, and this is SPF 50, and I usually have it even stronger than this, you, I, I put on sunscreen all the time because I will sunburn quick. I uh, have a way to repair kit, um, which is always handy. It seems somebody uh, always seems to be damaging their waders and you can actually do a quick repair with this kit and get back on the water. Weights, I always carry an extra pack of weights. And this is kind of special. Um, a lot of people in bass fishing aren't that familiar with it. I'm actually gonna do a video about this this summer. And what this is, these are slip bobbers or strike indicators but they're the ones that Phil Rowley uh, makes. And these are great because um, you can set them up and when you set the hook on the fish, it pops and it slides down right to the fly. And what I use with these slip barbers, you can use, uh, of course, nymphs, but I use ballast leeches. And these ballast leeches are the same ones I'm using when I go stillwater fishing for trout, like this ice minnow, or the bruised leech, or these, like they're like green woolly buggers, absolutely deadly. So you're out bass fishing and you're throwing poppers and all of a sudden it shuts down. Well, you don't want to ruin the day. Sure, you can throw woolly buggers, but I find just like good guides uh, uh, who are taking people out in drift boats, if you put an indicator on and you put one of these uh, flies, just like nymphs, put some of these ballast leeches below and it's going along, I catch so many nice bass when they're looking down instead of looking up with these, and they're kind of like my lifesaver. Kind of like the Hail Mary of uh, bass fishing when uh, conditions get tough. So I, I depend on this and it's, it's in here, it's not with my regular stuff, it's kind of like when things are going wrong, I pull these babies out and they save the day to catch fish. Up here in the top, you put a lot of stuff in the zipper area here, but, I also bring some here, one fell out there. I bring uh, sink tips of different uh, weights in case we start have to throw streamers to deeper water or in faster water. I always like to have some Gorilla Glue uh, handy in case I need to do a repair to something. Of course, you gotta have measuring tape in case somebody catches a record or doesn't believe how big that fish is. You wanna be able to take a measurement. I think that's it for that compartment. And over here, I always have one compartment I pretty much dedicate to flashlights because I'm a big fan of having lots of flashlights, just like having a lighter and, and toilet paper and a knife. You, you want to have certain things always in your bag or your box that are there for an emergency. And uh, I got a little flashlight here. Um, I love these headlamps. And again, they're, they're cheap now. And uh, I think I've got, yeah, I do. I've got three. Right, there's another one. This one's a magnetic one. You can attach to uh, the side of the boat or uh, something, but the headlamp's probably my top one I use. I put that on. You're coming out, you're late getting off the water. You just put that on your head. You can see everything you're doing. 
or you're out in the boat and there's uh, like a hex hatch is going on and it's just at the edge of, of dark. You put that on, you can see for tying on flies and things like that. So this is a nice overview of what I've put in this Yeti uh, uh, Go Box. They're absolutely fantastic. I strongly recommend them. Uh, I know why the guides out in Wyoming and other places use them because they're so heavy duty and you can put so many different things in them. I do recommend these uh, meal boxes uh, like this one or others uh, just because they're so uh, diversified in terms of how you can organize your things and get everything labeled, whether it's leeches, gurglers, terrestrials, whatever, and tailor these boxes to whether it's an Orvis bag or it's a Yeti uh, hard box like this. It'll help you get organized, have all your stuff, and you don't have loose flies going everywhere. I like to hear uh, other people's opinions as to what they would put in their box or what they do put in their box because I'm always trying to learn what are the best things to put in my uh, uh, boat box because uh, you always got to think about the emergencies. And I will tell you, every time I think I've got everything in here, I, I go out in the water and, uh, and I'll go, oh, I wish I had brought blank. Anyways, I hope you have a great season. Hope you learned something from this video and hope to see you on the water. This video is made possible by Fish USA, America's fly shop. Visit us today at fishusa.com.